Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to train and classify traffic signs using convolutional neural networks. This will be done using OpenCV in real time using a webcam. In this video, we will train traffic signs with over 35,000 images of 43 different classes with the help of TensorFlow and Keras. By the end of the video, I will be sharing information that will help you classify your own data set. Information such as how long does it take to train, how much data of each class is required to have a good classification model. So stay tuned. If you would like to learn more about trending AI models and its applications, do consider subscribing as I will be uploading videos on a weekly basis. So let's get started. So once you have downloaded the GitHub repository, you will see something like this. Now we have my data that will be available in a different link. So if we look in our data, we can see we have 43 different folders starting from zero and ending to 42. So in each folder, we have images of the relevant classes. For example, this is of 20 speed limit. And then we have of 30 and then we have all these different signs as you can see in one folder now in the labels we have the names of these classes so what we have seen back is the ids 0 1 2 till 42 but in our labels we have the name of each id so zero represents speed limit of 20 whereas 14 represents stop and so forth now the model trained is basically the file that has all the information for the classification so once you have trained your model you will get an exported file that will be model trained dot p this is a pickle file that we will unpickle in our testing code and run it as a model so let's look at the code now. What we have at the beginning is all our libraries. So we have NumPy, Matplotlib, Keras, etc. So one thing that is not mentioned here uh, is the TensorFlow that you have to install as well. So if you just install Keras and try to run it, it will give you an error and it will tell you you have to install. Uh, TensorFlow. So how do you install? You go to file, you go to settings and in the project you go to add. So whatever is missing whenever you get a red line which means it is missing you can type in here for example Keras and you can press on install package. So this is how you will install each one of these packages. So once that is done we have our parameters. Now in the parameters the first one is where your data is stored, the folder in which it's stored. So in our case we have my data as the folder name and then we have to define our labels file in which we have all the names. So it's labels.csv. The rest of the parameters uh, I don't recommend you to change unless you know what you're doing. So uh, the only thing you might want to change is the epochs, uh, it is how many iterations it will go through. So something like 10 is uh, is good to start, but uh, going up to 20 to 30, it will take longer, maybe three, four hours, but it will give you some better results. Now, uh, the test ratio is basically how many images you are taking for training and how many images you are taking for testing. So if you if you have, for example, 1000 images, uh, if you put 0 0.2, it will split uh, 200 images for testing and then uh, your remaining images will be 800. From these 800, if you put a 0 0.2 for the validation, it will take 160 images for validation. So moving on, we have uh, the code for importing the images. So you don't have to worry about uh, the folders and uh, how many folders there are, how many classes there are. Once you put everything in my data, uh, the code will automatically detect how many classes there are and it will uh, put them all in one matrix. So let's see what happens if we run this. So once we run it, it will detect the number of classes. 
So total classes detected are 43. And then it will import each folder one by one. So right now it is importing each folder and the images in these folders and it will put all of these in one matrix. And that matrix will be images for the images themselves and the number, uh, the ID of the class, it will be stored in class number. So every image will have a corresponding ID that will be stored in class number. So moving on, we will split our data once we have, uh, let me stop this. So once we have our data, we can split it into our test and our validation uh, using the parameters that we have defined before. So one thing to note is that your data is stored in X train, X test and X validation. So all of these are basically array of images uh, that we will use later on. And all the corresponding IDs are stored in the Y. So Y train, Y test and Y validation. So before we go any further, we have to make sure that we have uh, the sizes of the X train, for example, and the Y train are similar because we should have, if we have a thousand images, we should have a thousand IDs. So all of this is just testing if the, uh, the training images and the training IDs are all similar. Similarly, the testing and the validations are all similar. If you get an error over here, you need to see that your uh, uh, data shape is not accurate. So then we are going to read our CSV file. And from there, we are going to plot our data so that we can visualize and see uh, if we are uh, uh, collecting the correct data and we are classifying it properly uh, before we start the training process. So if we run it again, let's see what happens. So if we run it again, we can see it is telling us the distribution of the training data set. And it's also telling us, uh, it is showing us each class um, with its corresponding label. Now at the bottom here, you can see that we have about 22,000 images for training, uh, around 5,500 images for validation and about 7,000 images for testing. And the data shape should be same 32 by 32 by three, which means three channels. And this is the Y uh, labels, not the labels, the IDs, that correspond to each image. So if we have 22,000 images, we should have 22,000 IDs uh, that correspond to where it belongs. Here, this is important to see that we do not have the same number of images for each class. So here you can see we have about 100 images for the first class, and then we have about 1,300 images for another class. So the distribution is not even. So we might get good classification for one class and a bad classification for the other because the data set is not evenly distributed. We do not have enough of each class. So we are going to learn at the end of this video how much uh, data set is required to have a good classification. So moving on, we are pre-processing our images. Uh, we are first converting it into grayscale and then we are equalizing um, our images so that we have standard standardized lighting for each image. And then we are normalizing the values. Uh, so for instead of 0 to 255, we will have values from 0 to 1. So all of this is done uh, just using a single line of code. All of the images are pre-processed and stored again in the X train y uh, uh, x uh, validation and x test at the end of this we are showing one example image so that we can see if everything is done properly later on we are adding a depth of one now all of these steps they are required so if you don't understand completely what's going on it's it's fine but what you need to know is what things you can change and how the process goes along. So for example, here we have the augmentations of images. So you have to do this to make it more generic. So we are rotating the images, we are shifting it left, right, we are zooming it in so that it makes uh, a different data set and it is more generalized rather than having plain images. 
Then at the end of it, we are going to create our model. So our convolutional neural network. So we are using the Lynette model, but we have modified it a little bit. Now, if you are familiar with how to create models and you want to add your own, you can do it here. But uh, here we have a few convolutional layers and then we have a few of the pooling and we have a few dropout layers. And at the end, we have our dense layer. Uh, which is our output layer and then we will simply compile this model and this is where the magic happens so the training will start over here where we are creating this model and then we are sending our data directly into this model and we are defining our parameters for the training and then at the end once the training is done it will show us our plot now in the plot we are plotting the loss and the validation loss and we are plotting accuracy and the validation accuracy and at the end we are testing using our testing data set and we are exporting our score so by the end of it we will store the model that we have created into a pickle object so that we can use it later on um, in, in real time using uh, our OpenCV functions. So let's run it and see what happens. So once you start the process, again, it will import all the classes. Once the classes are imported, it will show us the training, validation and testing data shapes and it will show us the distribution and it will show us some sample images. So what you need to do is you need to close them and then it will show us the augmented images and it will show us the uh, pre-processed images as well. So here you can see our images are zoomed in, they are stretched out and rotated. So once it's done, it will show us uh, the details of the network and then it will start with the training process. So by each iteration, it will show us how much accuracy and how much loss we are getting. So here you can see, and it will also show you the estimated time. So we have about 10 epochs, and this is how much it will take to finish one epoch. So we have about five minutes for each, so it will take about 50 minutes to train this model. So once it's completed, you will see something like this. We have the plot for loss and we have the plot for accuracy. And we can see that we are getting fairly good results. Now I have used 30 epochs and uh, you can see after a while, after about 15 epochs, uh, it's pretty much um, going at the same level. So probably 10 to 15 epochs would be a good estimation of where you want to land. So let's look at the exact values. So here we can see that our accuracy is 0 0.97, uh, which is fairly good. And then we have uh, the training loss, which is 0 0.09, which is again fairly good. And then the validation loss and the validation accuracy are actually high. And we are getting 99% of accuracy, which is extremely good and our test score is very good as well we are getting 0 0.016 so overall we can see that our data is trained fairly well and now let's look at how it will perform in real time so let's look into the traffic sign test now so we have our libraries and then we have our parameters in the parameters the most important one is the threshold uh, this is the percentage after which it will accept it as a classification so if we have more than 90 percent uh, of probability it will accept it as uh, the class being detected so then we have our camera parameters uh, we are setting up our camera and then we are importing our uh, pickle object which is our model trained so it should be in the same folder and then we are pre-processing the image as we did before uh, before the training process then we have uh, the class names so that we can display and here is our while loop that will run continuously to give us our webcam image so we are <coughs> 
predicting uh, the image over here we are predicting the class and then based on this if our prob probability value is greater than our threshold it will print out this value now let's see how that works so here is our camera so let's put out an image so here we can see this is our class 9 and it says no passing which is correct uh, let's try another one this is class 1 where the speed limit is 30 km per hour which is correct again so this is the example of 20 km per hour and as you can see the probability is not very well so it's not detecting very accurately and uh, it's ranging from 70 to 80 percent and it's flickering quite a bit so let's see why that happens so if we open up our distribution data so class number zero is only about a hundred images so that is the reason why it's unable to detect it properly so what is a good value of detection how many images do we need at a minimum to have a good detection rate so based on this data set uh, you can determine that uh, class number 14 which is our uh, stop image has about 500 images which gives us good results so anything below 500 it gives us a little bit of results it's not as accurate so anything above 500 should be a good place to start So for images such as uh, class 1, 2 and 3, we should have high detection rates with high probability because they have a lot of data. So for this example, we have 120 km per hour, which is class number 8. If we see class number 8, we can see we have almost 800 above images. So this means that our... Uh, our training model was able to classify this properly was able to learn it very well so you can see we have a hundred percent probability that this is a 120 kilometer per hour uh, image now again uh, I would say that a threshold would be 500 so if you have 500 or above images that is a good place to start so as you go further it will be getting better and better but anything below 500 you might face some difficulties so this is it for today's video in the next video we will get our own data and run it through a convolutional neural network to see how that performs so stay tuned for that and i will see you in the next video